Hey, it's Mars, and this is Let's Make a Dungeon Crawler Part 21. In this video, we'll be making floating damage text. You typically don't see floating damage text in dungeon crawlers. However, one, it's easy to do, and you can use this technique in future games. And two, it's a fun alternative when debugging damage, armor, and resistance values, as opposed to watching the console. So let's get started on making the damage text itself. I had originally planned on using a world space canvas, like the health bar, on top of our enemy's head. However, it's actually much easier to use what's called a text mesh. So I'll right click and we'll create a 3D text. So this is a bit large. Let's go ahead and change the character size from 1 to 0.1. Now it's a bit small and still blurry, so let's change the font size from 0 to about 50. So this is how it would look if we dealt 35 damage. That size looks alright. And as with the unit health bar, we want this number to face the camera, since we're going to be up here looking down on our game. So let's add a script face camera late, and we will reverse axis, reverse face rather. Now it will be looking at us when we hit play, that's good. And let's align the text see how it's anchored at the top left of the three here. Let's set the anchor to middle, alignment, center. So now the text is ex the, um, the zero, zero, zero position. I'm also going to set it to bold. And that's good there. So now let's add a ply blocks component. And then I'm going to save this as a prefab. Let's call this FDT for floating damage text. And I'm going to drop that in my project window to make it a prefab. And then I will set the, the numbers there blank so we don't see a 35 for a split second every time it pops up. So this prefab is good to go. And let's Let's set when it gets instantiated. In the last video, we gave our player a receive damage event where we can mitigate elemental damage, dodge, block, evade, and then here is where the health is reduced, change attribute health, and then we can this is where we will instantiate the floating damage text. I'm going to put this whole event, the receive damage event, I'll right click on the top block, copy with following, and I'm going to give our zombie a receive damage event. So I'll go to the zombies, apply blocks, common custom, I'll paste. Now the zombie can receive damage based on its armor values or resistances if the enemy has any and I'll rename this receive damage and here let's set the the floating damage text so we will object instantiate let's create an instance of floating damage text we want to set the position of our self this is on the zombie also note that position of self will be down here at the zombie's feet. So we're going to do position of self plus 2 should be around here. So that's a vector 3 A plus B. We'll go to math. Vector 3 A plus B. And let's do get position of self and then we'll add 2 on the y-axis. Object get position there. When we receive damage on the zombie, create floating damage text at position of self world plus two. 
with rotation, it doesn't matter, and set, let's set a reference to this. So we'll go to variables and grab a temp variable. And let's just rename this to floating damage text. There we go. So now that we've set a reference to it, we can make adjustments to that newly created prefab from this event right here. So let's go to a common set property block, and we want to set the text on the 3D text that we just instantiated. So I'm going to drop that into this. So let's grab it in the hierarchy and drop it into the first null box on the set property block. And now we can browse to text mesh text. Now that we've got the proper value, I'm going to delete it out. And instead of referencing a text mesh from the hierarchy, let's reference the text mesh that we just created and set a variable for. So we're setting text mesh dot text on, and then here we can just use the temporary variable. And then what do we want to set the text to? Let's set it to mitigated damage. So I will do a common as string, since mitigated damage is a float. I'll paste that in. And now we're creating floating damage text, hopefully above the zombie's head, two units above the feet. We're setting a temporary variable reference. And then we're setting the text on the reference to the damage as a string. All right, so we're done there. Let's go to the damage text itself. And we have a ply blocks component. Let's go ahead and say common on start. And we want to destroy this text after about two seconds so that they don't fill up in the hierarchy. I'll do an object. Destroy after two seconds. Let's also make it move upwards after it's been instantiated. So we can do a common on update. And here let's do a object translate. We'll move the text upwards. So we're going to translate self by a very small number since update happens many times a second. Let's set the y value to 0 0.005. Now you'll see it doesn't show up in this vector 3 just because the, val the value is so small, but it is here. So now on update, translate by 0 0.005 on the y axis, and then it will be deleted after 2 seconds. I'd also like the text to fade out. We're going to take the text, let's say once again we did 35 damage, and it's moving upwards over two seconds before it gets deleted. And we also want the opacity, the color dot alpha, to be reduced over that two seconds. So let's go to a, let's set the current alpha to a temporary variable. So we'll go variables, set temp, and then we want a common git property. Let's drop in our floating damage text so that we can get the drop down on the git property block. And we're going to set the text mesh color alpha. That's the opacity of the letters. And let's set that to, I'll just rename this from var to alpha. Now we're just going to use a set property block. Once again, I'll drop in itself. Let's browse to text mesh color A. And we want to do the current color or the current alpha minus a very small number. So let's do float A minus B. That's in math. Float A minus B. And let's do alpha minus, so let's grab alpha, that's a temp variable, alpha minus, and let's use 0 0.002, should fade away over two seconds quite nicely. So I'll grab a common float of 
0.002. Now in our last video, damage mitigation, we set it up so that the enemy triggered the receive damage event, but I haven't done the same for the player. So I will grab the on skill hit from the enemy attack, where instead of changing the attribute health, it triggers the receive damage event. Let's copy that. And then in our player's attack, on skill hit, instead of changing the health, let's trigger receive damage on the hit object as ply blocks. And then we'll send, let's say, 20 damage. All right. I'm going to make it move up a little faster, and we'll fade it out a little faster as well. Let's move up by 0.02, and let's reduce the alpha by 0.02. Let's see how that looks. All right, that's very nice. So once again, not something you'd typically see in a dungeon crawler, but it is fun, easy, and a good way to test out different armor and damage values. So thank you so much for watching, and if you learned something, hit that like button. Join me next time, where we'll be setting up a campfire.